Say one and welcome back to some more FGO. We're gonna continue with it more. Gutter Damerung! And we're gonna go to Village 23, which is an odd name. If anything, it sounds more like, you know. Is there gonna be like, yeah, there are like, for example, 50 villagers? Well, 50 villages, I mean. And then they... Do they grow? Do they grow? Like, you know, they growing humans there. And then they eat them or something like that. Is it gonna be something like that? Because it actually makes me think on... Uh, this uh, this uh, Swedish RP game called uh, uh, Year Zero. There is a, probably some of you probably recognize the name because there is this game um, taking place, you know, with mutants and stuff like that. In um, well, it was released like a year ago, or something like that. And in that, there is actually stories about how certain mutants uh, animals were grow um, animal mutated uh, people grew up in like in some random tribes i think it's like something like that like this i guess i guess things that just things that popped into my brain lot of cre lot of creation we so i guess Oh god, I have a, I have a weird feeling about this though. Well, it looks lovely. Wait, there's no snow in here. Shutting down high speed mode now. Good work on hanging on, everyone. Our current estimated location is atop what used to be Lake Vannen, the lake northwest of Lake Vetten. I need, well, I guess I'm gonna go check it. Um, yeah, it's near lean shopping and all that. <laughs> That's so funny. Which means this village is almost certain didn't exist in proper human history. Nope. We're here. Welcome to my village. Foo foo. It's sheep time. Time to eat the sheep. It is so strange and wonderful. I thought the guests only showed up in stories. I never thought I'd get actually welcome real guests myself one day. And ooh. And 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 and. You must be envoys too. Have you never had any visits from outside your village before? No, we haven't. All the village really keep to themselves. That do sounds uh, very weird, if you ask me. Hmm. Hmm. That is weird. Why would I do that? Oh, but maybe it's different than other villages? Maybe. I see. What's this village called? You never did tell us your village name, did you, Jada? The part that stands out the most to me is the large gate that makes up what looks like the only entrance. I don't know much about architectural design, but this place does seem to have its own unique style. I also send powerful magic energy here. The whole village is surrounded by bounded fields centered on that large gate. Bounded. Maybe it's to block out giants and stuff like that? We jam base and Oh! See? I'm... I got the big brain here, guys! 
Although I didn't notice it that until I was inside. I guess it's the snow. The magic energy mixed with the snow and ice and magic energy that makes up the village bound field are extremely similar. It's very static, sedated kind of energy, as it's present with the most natural thing in the world. It's calm, gentle and very stable in the amount of magical energy it holds. Maybe kind is a little too vague, but I'm not quite sure how else to put it. I think kind works. I guess. Yes, I first noticed it in the snow plains, but it feels like there's nothing malicious in this lost belt at all. Until we learn the fact that they breed humans to eat them, or something like that. And, but then again, for us, it, it's considered morally wrong. But what if they are cow people? They just return the favor. I must. Uh, all that aside, this village is really spacious. Maybe that's because there's so few houses and a large plot of farmland in the center. I can see there grow also the crops here. There's wheat, numerous fruit trees. It's just like Yarda said, it's warm here as it was in that flower garden. This explains how people could survive even in Lost Belt predominantly made up of snow, ice and fire. Although there is still one thing I don't understand. If bound fields are so crucial to ensure the people's way of life here, who put them up? Foo foo. Shut up, you furry cat. Maybe Magecraft is just part of everyday life here even more than it was in Russia. Well, I wonder if there are any opportunities around here. Or maybe this is someone in these villages who know how to work with the bounded fields. <laughs> but how feels? Are you talking about the charm on the gate? I didn't really understand most of what you were talking about, but um, I do know that every village gate always has a charm on it. Then we we'll put them there for us to keep all the young, the ice bees, really anything scary. Keep out, oh yeah. I'm surprised you two didn't know that is your envoys. Is that just the way it works, Lady Mashu? How does she know that every village has that if she never been to another village? How does she even know there are other villagers? Hmm? Maybe everyone is dead. I think you may have the wrong idea about us. I don't believe we are what you call envoys. Although if envoy is a term you use for visitors, then I suppose we might qualify. Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> oh, I look through. Let me see. The spring on? Ahem, <clears throat> ahem. This is the shadow border. Can you hear me, field ops? Ha! Huh. Uh -huh. Director? Director, it's you. I thought we couldn't communicate once we got a few kilometers away. Makes sense, though, since there is no snow here to interfere. But then again, in a way, it doesn't make sense because, you know, the signal needs to traverse, you know? It doesn't just magically teleport, like, boop, appearing in this area. So the snow would still interfering. At least what I understand from, like, radio signals and radio waves, you know. So I still don't think it would work. If it's not the fact that it's just the snow and the magic just affect the, the devices itself. So as soon as they get there, they could... You know, pick it up again. I guess that's how it works. Yes, well, my technical advisor has been testing out a number of different things between her work on repairing the border, all under my impeccable supervision, of course. And thanks to those efforts, we've been able to deploy a mystical drone to extend our com range. Oh. What the fuck are they doing outside? Weird people outside. So they're using drones. Okay. That makes sense. And yeah, the communication did work in the snow, so it was me miss yeah, me me my brain missing messing this up. Uh, but yes, my luck, neither our technical advisor nor any staff are in the cockpit right now. 
Yeah, all well, I'm repairing the border. Well, who is this Stanley Zifruit tubby man? He's fat. I've never seen a fat person before. So this is what they call shabby. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I I don't want to brag, but I'm fat too. Hold your hold your applause. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> shabby. Is he a friend of yours, Lady Marshall? Doesn't mean he's an envoy too. Foo foo. Tubby? Did she call me Tubby? Well, um, this is a communicator. It's a tool we have to talk for people to tip. Tip 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 Awesome, the dragon might be big boned. Dude. Is he Cartman? And I mean, I would say like this. If someone is fat, shabby, then they are, but it's not always as simple as the person is like just lazy or something like that. There are many reasons for why a person can be overweight. So that's made very different. I mean, many do have underlying problems. For me, example, I'm depressed as fuck, so I barely have any energy to do anything and I just stay at home. So yeah, that kind of happened. Oh, but we embrace our big boundness, our tubbiness, our chubbiness. <laughs> Let's do it. Is that your nature of this place? Then you must have found a safe village. And again, if that foul mouth a little brat who doesn't understand that mocking people's blood type is not acceptable as anything to go by? Then her culture must still be of the ladder of civilization. <laughs> I mean, I do accept, I mean, uh, well, except I agree that we should not mock, uh, you know, different body types, either if you are really fat or incredible thin or have a weird body type. That I do agree on. I agree on. But <laughs> it is a brat. Fuck you, brat. Well, no matter. She'll run to ten. To be natural cruel, and my skin is quite thick by this point. I'm not the least bit bothered. Sure about that, Gorov. Though, I know myself, I don't know how many times, especially in the past, I got comments like, Oh, look at that fat ass. I'm like, Okay. Couldn't you come up with something more smarter to say than already the fact that I already know, like, I never noticed I'm fat, guys. <gasps> oh my god, how did you know? I never noticed that. <gasps> guys, I am fat. I mean, <laughs> that's how I feel like every time someone writes something like that to be like, you know, take it on the nose. Doesn't mean it's a it's a it's a right thing to do, you know, writing and tagging people like that. But you know, so never mind that child. You're gonna need a report about your situation. Whoop! <laughs> so you made your way to this village of rescuing that child. It seems you put your expense in Russia to good use. Or I suppose I should say my supervi supervisor role in Russia has benefited you even after that lost belt. Not bad, making it this far this fast. Let me begin by congratulating you on your good work. I'll be sure to share your information with the rest of the staff, including the technical advisor. Now, given that our connection is still unstable and we can't talk for long, the same time I took matters into my own hands. Yeah? You're gonna come here, director? Or do you think I am some adventure quest not like the rest of you? I'm talking about the remote interrogation of a local via this transmission. But that is child, obviously. We won't get anything useful out of her. Now then, little one. Me? Run along and get your parents. If you don't mind, I'll need to talk to them. 
parents? Why are those? Uh, your mother and father, of course. If they're dead, your legal guardian will do. You mean the goddess? I hear she's everyone's mother. Scotty? Damn, she is fucking around a lot, isn't she? Okay. There is no parents? Could it be that? Yeah, they mentioned sacrifice. She mentioned sacrifice before, right? Could it be that when they are old enough, they are ripe for the picking? And then they just pick adults? Every human is the goddess child after all. But I'm afraid the goddess isn't here, Mr. Shabby. That's a good name. Yeah, da? Not that you have no concept of parents. I've never heard of such a culture. I suppose it's possible for some new religions, but given your primitive rook and crowfing, I can't imagine your value is part of something like that. What is going on? Oh, Alright then, just fetch me your village elder, your major, or your supervisor. I, I don't know. Supervisor? Yes, a capable, distinguished person who is in charge of everything, like me. Distinguished? Does being a shabby person make you distinguished? Well, it do. True, true. That has nothing to do with it. Good heavens, girl. The new parent raised you to rat. <laughs> oh, right, you don't have parents, do you? Well, uh, you know, somebody with a 40 in your village. What? The most amazing person in your village, the one who can always count on you to help you out. You talk about envoys? It match is certainly more amazing than normal people. The only other amazing people I can think of are the giants and the envoys, but envoys don't come out there tomorrow. Envoys? You had to call me an envoy too. I'm afraid I'm still not sure what she means by it. What I mean? An envoy is an envoy, right? I mean, no human could ever defeat a giant. Um, but never mind that. Uh, you, we should mind that. I'm... Okay. It's obviously... This village... Everyone is demented. They are crazy. Ta -da. Uh, I mean, considering the very fact that they have no parents... They have no effing, uh, well, as what Yerda is telling, no idea about, like, uh, you know, many things. She didn't even know what a horse is, but they have sheep, so she knows what a sheep is. At least she should, if she's not completely brain dead. Who knows? I will not, I will not be judging by that. Um, meaning, they definitely living, like, an ignorant kind of blissful life where they have no fucking idea what's happening. They have no idea about the world. And it really do makes makes it feel more like, you know, they are placed here to grow and then being maybe used to food or energy or something like that, you know? Because they kept in this ignorance bliss. You know? And that is just... Very crazy. And that would explain why it is Village 23. Why it's called Village 23. I mean, it's literally... Um, Neverland. That was the thing I was thinking of before. Uh, you know how they're having all these kids growing... And they're having this nanny taking care of them. And... Um, Promise Neverland, I think it was called, right? I did watch the anime a while back, and this, that's the feeling I get from this. I still need to show you around properly, don't I? 
Welcome, honored envoy. You too, Mrs. Tiny Seafruit Shubby. Welcome to our home, Village 23. Please let me repay you for saving my life. You can spend the night in my house. I'll be 13 soon after all, so I already got my own house. She's 13, I don't want to get... Well, 12 and have her own house? I didn't have my own apartment until I was like 24, 25, something like that. Damn. Move quickly. We can have dinner in front of my fireplace. I can get out that mead I've been saving for a special occasion too. Mead? Hmm. This will be great. We can have freshly baked bread and I'll get some fish too. I'll go fishing before it gets dark and make sure to catch the biggest one in the pond. Foo 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 foo. Wait, hang on. Why did you say your village name was? Village 23, right? Yes, that's right. What about it? Well, um, it just sounds a bit... Why is it really named with a number? There's nothing strange about it, after all. No. It's Yerda. Yerda is back. Welcome back, Yerda. You did get the herbs the legend talked about. Now Laura's gonna be alright. Hooray! We are the oh there is a white animal too. It is an animal, right? What is it? Is it a mouse? Oh this they're cute. <laughs> He's gonna end up eating in this um In the not singularity. This lost belt. God I'm brain literally skipped there. Wow, you're so pretty, miss. And your black arm is so awesome. Pretty hair, pretty face. You look like the envoy. Are you the envoy too? Okay, she has a very deep voice. No judging. Your poop is... <laughs> oh, it looks cool in that armor. Alright, senpai, what's... These, Mashu, are children. They are like adults, but smaller. I would say dumber, but to be fair... Most adults are pretty fucking dumb as well. I would say. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much. That old guy's so tuppy. Were you smaller than us even though you look so old, mister? Why are you small? Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, I guess the holograph is pretty small and not natural sized. <laughs> I guess. Oh, be quiet. Do you children ever stop squawking? Just run off and play, would you? Or better yet, go and fetch a grown up. Kids, kids everywhere! Oh, <laughs> like the Buzz Lightyear meme. <laughs> you know, Buzz Lightyear Woody. Kids, kids everywhere. Man, why, why have I, why do, why do I feel worried about all the lollicons? Will be like. Fucking foaming over this, like. Kids. Yeah. Let's shoot some lollicons outside the gate, shall we? That's true, I haven't seen a single adult yet. Since this village appeared to rely on agriculture for its survival, it meant that everyone working is just out on the fields. But if that's the case, then why aren't there any elderly people around? What? Is that true? Well, of course, it's most children here. That's how it's everywhere, right? No. Besides, hey, you're yeah, so funny, lady. Much everyone was an elder, elderly, or just from legend. <laughs> uh, you know, old people are from legends. Okay, boomers, time to die. You're you're just in legends. The game told me, sorry, bye bye. <laughs> uh, it do reminds me in. Um, just because. Um, there is an. Uh, an uh, something called Ette Stupa. Which is in and um, which was 
n not completely sure if, if this was a real thing, but in Norway, Sweden and Iceland, there was these massive high cliffs where elderly people threw themselves down to their deaths. Um, and it was when old people... It, by the, this is just a uh, story, so it's not sure if it's really happened, but by those legends, it was that the, when the, the old people couldn't do support themselves or assist the household any longer, when they were so old that they couldn't do anything anymore, they would throw themselves down, you know, to, to die and stuff like that, you know, so they, they don't wouldn't weigh down the household and the family. So, really kind of crazy as uh, thing this at the stupa uh, but it's it, it it's is many do think it might be real or maybe they just took when they the old old man wasn't i can't lift my fingers anymore they like, okay bye bye grandpa down the cliffs <laughs> really awful to think about it i mean yeah I mean, in a way, I can understand because back in that, in those days, how things worked very differently. I mean, of course, today we have a society and system that can support people in much more ways than they could do then. It doesn't mean that was a nice thing to do if it was real. Of course, it's it's as I said, it's legends and stuff like that. But still, I just I thought random. Uh, information for you at the stupa. So now you know when a, a person reach 14 hour in our in Sweden, we just throw them out the cliff. So there is why there's no old people in Sweden. We kill them. <laughs> That's awful. I, we don't do that, of course not. But yeah, of course you're not going to find any in the village. I mean, every grown up leaves when they turn 25, right? Uh huh. Twenty-five, eh? Pretty interesting to mention. Twenty-five. Isn't that pretty much when a human, well, at least men, are fully developed? Because I'm actually gonna Google. Because I do know when we say like you're an adult when you're 18 is not completely correct while by law we are an adult our brain are still developing until like i think for women up to like what 21 22 and males 25 ish or something like that meaning that the brain is, is still not fully developed so for me my brain is fully developed it's still fucking bad but uh we're gonna check this see I've been playing here and we're learning so many weird things together. Hey! Um, when is the brain fully developed? 25! Neuros neuroscientists are confirming what car rental place already figured out. The brain doesn't fully mature until age 25. Up until this age, the prefrontal cortex, the part of the brain that helps curb impulsive behavior, is not yet fully developed. See? How about fucking that? Eh? See? Lord of no things! As in, leaves the village? Of course. Uh, what in the world are you saying? They couldn't possibly survive out there. What with all the gi giants, giants roaming about? Yeah, I know. Every grown with a 10 year old child leaves once they turn 25 and gets eaten by giant. Every girl with a 10-year-old child who was a 25 gets eaten by giant? That's messed up. And secondly, that means that they are at least like 14, 15 when they when they get getting a child, which is 
you know, extremely young. I mean, it's it's an obviously not impossible, obviously not, but it's very young. So nobody ever lives past 25. And if you haven't had a shower by 15, then you have to go too. I heard that's true for every village, at least all the villages from 1 to 100. So there are 100 villages. Dude, this is, I mean, this is literally breeding, dudes. This is literally breeding. Like, if you don't have a, sh a shag when you're 15, you're, you're out. But why are they breeding and what for? What, then you're telling us there are no adults over the age of 25 there? None? And that people who turn 15 without having children have to leave to die? Hmm? Children and the grown-up raising them are the only ones allowed to live in the, in the hundred villages the goddess had, and their emblems made for us after all. I guess that's a dude! I mean, ima imagine having that hanging over you, you know? One thing that I as a person, as a human, is that I know, we know all, we will all die one day. However sad and depressing that is, but we don't know when, you know? We, we, I can be living for 60 years long more. It can be six years only. We don't know. And in a way that can also protect us because we can like... <sighs> I don't need to think about that, but when you know literally like, well, as soon as I'm 25, I'm dead. If I don't have a child when I'm 15, if I don't, I'm fucked. And what about guys? I mean, those that, you know, are they like yeeted out? Like, ah, you know, you're done for. Man, ah! <laughs> sucks. <laughs> but yeah. There's nobody who turn. AKA, funny fact, I would have been for dead for eight years then by these rules, cause... <laughs> or if I was seeded that I went 15, it would have been 18 years. Lady Masher, Lady Lano, Mr. Shabby? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Why are you all so shocked? That's just how it is. It's same everywhere, right? I'm turning 15 in two years, so if I don't have any children by then, splat. That would be it for me. Teggy is very, very chill about that. This is absurd. Everything you say is ridiculous. Well, the way your mind works is too. Do you even grasp what you're saying? You're telling us there are only a hundred person, hundred people in each village? Oh, so there's just a hundred people in each village. Every die if you don't have a shop before you turn 15? They'll die in two years? Are you some kind of homunculus? I can say things like that if they were normal. We even look happy about it. Yeah, dude, this is this is messed up. Like, what? You two fool, what happened? Why do you sound so sad all of a sudden? Oh no, did I say something to offend you again? Now what do I do? It's a... That's a nice, pretty, that's a pretty castle, man. <sighs> what an elegant castle you have here. I like it very much. It's wonderful design, of course, but I also love your choice of material. <clears throat> it's made completely out of ice, after all. No human could ever live here, no matter how beautiful it is. Um... You haven't seen Frozen, haven't you? And to be fair, people could live in there, most likely. I mean, we we have the fucking ice hotel up in, uh, like, Jukasjärvi and whatever, you know? Where they build a literal uh, hotel out of ice where people live in. I mean, of course you don't go around there barefooted in just, uh, like, uh, your underwear or something like that. Or waving around your dick. Then you probably die. But still, the perfect witch castle, something humankind yearns for but can never hope to reach. You really do have an excellent taste, your majesty. 
Who said it was made to my tastes? Oh my, you mean it isn't? Does it mean you prefer something more typical like Cinderella's castle? Cinderella? I never heard the name, but she certainly sounds interesting. She must have lived a life full of hope and surprise, one far removed from the life of a woman of ice and snow like myself. They call never bother me. Oh yes, without a doubt. The early part of with her stepsis abusing her is great, but then she comes out on top and the stepsis get their just desserts. It's a positively repulsive story. Yeah, of course she would like that. Of course you would like that, you... Woman! I'm just so relieved that you aren't like that, your majesty. After all, you hate, you're hate, you hate happy endings, don't you? Yes, look at this cold, utilitarian world you designed. It makes me want to friend you on a mage... A mage book. Oh my god. Do they have a mage book as well? I mean, I know it's based, you know, Facebook, mage book, like, dude, what are you, you, your mages are literally boomers, like, who still use Facebook? My father, but he is a boomer, so. I'd love to know just how many human lives you've seen come to a miserable end. After all, you didn't build this castle for humanity to enjoy, did you, oh goddess? No, I did not. This castle exists for me, not for the benefit of humans. She said, with her long tail low riding there, like, ah. I will admit that Odin was a fine man in his own right, but he was also God. He would never bestow upon me a God's design to accommodate humans. The All Father would never concern himself with humans' weaknesses. The thought would never even cross his mind. Indeed, humans are weak, frail, so very fragile. Their lives are snuffed out by the mere passage of time. Yeah, that's kind of how we are. That is why they will always need the boundless love of a god to sustain them. Or, you know, just let them grow, so to speak, you know, live their lives. I mean, we have seen how what the religious not people do in today, you know. Just saying, they, they, they tend to be a little bit crazy. M my love you say. I guess I had you figured wrong after all. So that's how you're running this place. You have a hundred villages with about a hundred residents in each. Making for a worldwide population no more than 10,000 people. Yeah. And in most circumstances they would just end up going extinct. But you kept them around for generations without letting their numbers increase. Their world resolves around the empty happiness of their daily lives and the heartless suffering that comes right at the end. There is no point in tormenting people like that. No wonder I've been so unmotivated here. It turns out this place was filled with love all along. Couldn't possibly get further from my tastes. Of course. Human must not die out. They too are my beloved children. They too survive the days of scorching flame. As their god, I will never stop loving humans. I cannot speak to other worlds. But the, that is the way of this one. I decided long ago that I would love my children for eternity. Why would I ever destroy them? Um, yeah. Then you really have no intention of destroying humans. Does it mean your majesty think they are worth protecting? You certainly ask many strange questions, Fox Woman. I would never think to destroy them. Fox Is it this? Is Coins Guy one of the Tamamon on my. Tamamon on my. Is she? Every creature in my domain is treated the same way. Did not tell you what that was. A simple question do I kill them? Or do or love them. If they are an enemy, then I kill them. If not, I love them. To be mother of Scandinavia is to love all creatures, great and small. None must die out. None shall die by my hand. Even if Odin himself proved to be incapable of such a feat, I will never stop trying. 
no matter how many thousands of years it may take. That said, yes, that said at times the journey must be offered as a sacrifice. Why are you so smug about it? Quaraskaya, I don't like you! Ophelia, your concern proved to be well founded. The Russian lost belt has been destroyed, and won't be much longer before it disappears entirely. Now that the world will never be capable of welcoming a new god, what a pity. All the more so to give the strength of its history. In regards to Kadok, I said all I had to say during our meeting, so I won't be repeating myself here. But I do need to commend you for your outstanding actions in predicting this outcome. I... I didn't. Yes, you gave me far too much credit, Lord Kishtaria. Ophelia, I want you to run, run your lost belt however you see fit. Once the tree of emptiness has taken root in a world, it is not that the world's king will continue to develop it, but we cryptus. In the end, that responsibility falls to us alone. We cannot delegate it any to, to anyone else. The Queen of Ice and Snow is both generous and cruel. I understand dealing with her must be quite stressful. But I want you to preserve, perse persevere. I know you're more than capable of doing so. You have your own fire burning inside you, yet you keep yourself as cold as ice. That's why I know I can trust you with Scandinavia. I, with all due respect, Lord Kishtaria, I can't be taking any credit for predicting this. I was speaking solely based on my own feelings. I'm so ashamed. Here are you praising me for keeping my cool, and I fail it utterly to do so. It's alright. What you said was exactly what Kadok needed to hear. No amount of cool-headed logic was ever going to help him with his complex about me. Your admoni admo admonition was far more effective than encouragement I could have given him, even if it did come too late. At any rate, none of the other cryptos know that Russia has fallen. I only heard about it from Kainis and you from Koenskaya. Akuta has cut off all communication, it seems the Lost Bill's king is quite a find. After all, even Akuta of all people couldn't help but frown when she made her report. I even heard her sigh. I can only imagine her lost by king must be either extremely unruly or extremely daring. I would love to speak with her m myself at some point. Hinako's sign? That is a surprise. Is it? I have no idea! What is a surprise and what is not? I never once saw her so much as crack a smile, even around Pepperoncino. Pepperoncino. Pepperoncino! It's me, Mario! That aside, shouldn't we tell the other crypts about Kadok? No need for that. His failure has no impact on their work after all. Given that Pepperoncino's lost bill has an alter ego, it's only a matter of time until he learns about it. Cool. But Beryl's lost bill is nearly on the verge of disappearing itself, so imagine he has a handful just keeping things going. Beryl's? Nani? What is what's going on with that place? Are you sure we can trust Beryl? The man is a criminal, a murderer. He kills just for the fun of it. He's a disgrace to humanity. Well, to, let's be fair. Most mages are pretty much fucked as well, you know? I don't see how kill known as a werewolf and despise through, throughout the clock talk could ever hope to be successful is expand a lost belt. All that is part of why I trust him to uphold his end, Ophelia. Beryl is just as good at deceiving himself as he is others. The more distasteful he finds the job, the more earnestly he will work to see it done. As for Kadok, there is no need for you to concern yourself with his well-being. Just focus on getting rid of Chaldea. I have every confidence you can do it. You are far more capable than me when it comes to combat, as your miraculous eye can even find womb servants. Nani? Alright, so it's a secret to hide here then. The Sharingan. The clock tower four of the figures are gone. They have no sway in this world. No one will hold you back anymore. You are free to use your power however you like. Your eye is no longer that of a shunned child. 
Thank you for saying so, Lord Kishdaria. I will bear that in mind. Your Scandinavian love spell is a rare and important one, particularly given that one of the old gods still resides there. What's more, she's been benevolent. Having her accept the support of the new world would be a tremendous asset. I have a high hope that you will be able to convince her, Ophelia. Thank you, Lord Kishdaria. I won't let you down. Oh yes, I almost forgot. Kainas should be paying you a visit soon. Treat him as you like. Thank you for consider, Lord Kitaria, but I'm afraid I have to tell you something. Kainas is a divine spirit and beyond my ability to keep in check. I hope you forgive me if I'm unable to stop her from clashing with my lost belt king. So you're concerned that the queen and your knight may end up destroying Kainas' spirit origin? I see. That was most encouraging to hear, Ophelia. This only reaffirms my decision to entrust you with this lost belt. Look forward to your next report. I expect that will be when you see that's formed. Man, this is... Vodime. Lord Kishtare Vodime. That's a woman's face. I've seen face like that before. I mean, yes, it's a woman's face, or do you mean someone that is in love kind of face? I may not know any personally, but I can't help but remember them. So you really are a woman at the heart, Ophelia. You're not meant to use your spirit form for peeping. Your job is only to keep me safe. Don't misunderstand me. You are my knight, my sword and shield. I never asked or wanted anything more from you, and that's never going to change. Know your place, Saber. Or do I need to remind you about my serious light? <laughs> I know I'm supposed to protect you and kill your enemies, Ophelia, but is that necessary here? Yes, humans have demonstrated incredible power before. At times they rebelled against gods, tricked giants, and even killed dragons. But not here. The humans here aren't people anymore. They're livestock. None of them are a threat to you. So that's so that's pretty much what I pre already amassed in my brain. They are like cattle. They they are breeded and livestocks. These humans used to be just like it was in proper human history. Weak, transient being whose only purpose was to be our prey. This web belongs to a goddess. Even if there are less than 10,000 humans here, it is still a pure land ruled by a goddess of old. Lord Kishtari even said it could end up the lost, lost belt left standing. The fact that the goddess ruled it also means it's a perfect place to experiment. That's why this lost belt has so much potential. In fact, it's far more than the sum of its part. Uh -huh. In terms of potential at any rate. If we can grow our tree to maturity, we might be able to breathe new life into humanity and nature alike. I don't care how much contempt you have for humanity as a result of your origins and temperament. All I care about is that you don't let your guard down. Again, you're my shield and my sword. Don't forget that. You and I share the same responsibility. You must grow this lost belt tree of emptiness to full maturity. That is your sole concern. Hmm. I've never been much of a gardener, but if you insist, Ophelia, I guess I've got no choice. Wow. I can still feel his gaze. I guess my knight will always be peeping on me, no matter how my attempts I tell him not to. I can tell you're still there, smirking me from behind my back. Yes, how long are you planning on watching me? I know I said you're my knight, but that doesn't mean. Oh, you again. The way you completely lack any present, I mistook you for a servant. Is there something you want to say to me? I certainly hope you're not going to comment on my woman who Black Saber did. I can't hear anything. What's your name? I'm ever going to get to hear what you sound like. Um, well, you already know my name. What is that for a thing? What is that?
What is she? So fucking weird. I will, uh, I will cut for now, actually. I'm sorry for that. But I will continue with more FGO later on. So thank you for watching. See you later on. And I will continue a super great day.